What's up, what's up, YouTube? Uh, so, as much as I've talked about them, uh, Wall Street Bets and their uh, just infinite wisdom, uh, there's a video out, this guy shared it, shared it in my chat, looks like it's been out for a while, since February of 21. That was in their prime, I think. Uh, anyway, uh, they told me to do a, a reaction video to this, just to see, I guess this is a bunch of traders, a bunch of trades from that, uh, and just kind of what I think. I have no idea what we're about to get into. Uh, I have a feeling it, I'll be talking a lot about risk management. Like, even if you think the trade is, if I think the trade is stupid, but you believe in it, like, you know, by all means, go to town. Uh, but with proper risk management, you're, <laughs> I already know that's going to be a joke. Uh, from what I've seen on, on Wall Street Bets so far, uh, it's probably a whole account, something dumb, probably expires the next day if it's options. Uh, I will say, I don't know if it's, I hope it's in here. There was one that I saw that had to be insider trading. It was next day expiration. This company's going to do something, and then FDA clears something. Unreal. You probably should play the lottery if you're that guy. If anyway, I put my headphones on, we're going to listen to this, so we'll just see how it goes. Long-time member of Wall Street Bets like myself, your personal experience with YOLOs is most likely as such. Losing the entire position, or losing the entire position? I remember this guy. From infinite money guy. glitches to million dollar option plays with mere days until I- The infinite money glitch? I'm not gonna lie. Uh, had I known about that while it was still a thing, I would have 100% done it. Knowing myself, yeah, I would have. Uh, the money glitch was a glitch in Robin Hood. I think the guy put $2,000 in and he sold some um, contracts on AMD, but it was enough. It was like $2,000 worth, which got it, which Robin Hood doubled that money, saw that money, so margined all the money it just collected, uh, and the guy went nuts with it. I would have taken my account up to a million dollars. Like, <laughs> I I think he yoloed it on like Apple, one of the most consistent ones going up at the time. I think he I think the stories he bought puts. I get a little bit of FOMO about that because I'm a little bit jealous. Of yeah, I would 100 percent taken that up. I wouldn't have yoloed it on something stupid. I would have probably just sold more contracts, more out of the money stuff. By the time Robin had said, "Hey, that's a glitch," like, "Oh, you're right, you're right. Uh, here's your money. I'm just gonna keep the change. My account would be that high." But I guess that's the difference in experience and YOLO. Does anybody know the average age of these people? It's probably pretty all over. Expiration. I'll be the first to say that it's going to be difficult to place any of these legendary trades below S tier. Let's start this off right. Control the narrative. How did control the narrative become a yeah, Wall Street Apple. Bets legend? Simple. By exploiting a Robin Hood glitch to YOLO $50,000 of borrowed money with no collateral. You heard me right. This legend used a goddamn Robin Hood infinite money glitch to borrow $50,000 from Robin Hood with only $2,000 in his account. After leveraging his account to meet his personal risk tolerance, Control the Narrative went on to engage in the most famous Wall Street bets YOLO in history. He bought $50,000 in Apple puts just before they reported quarterly earnings. Unfortunately for Control the Narrative, Apple crushed their earnings and the stock rocketed up in after hours trading. For our sake, at Market Open, this legend decided to record his loss live and capture this priceless moment. Was that not the rocket that the teacher died in? That he just showed? Uh, a school teacher, it was like 93 or something. Uh, also, so you put $2,000 in, you use the money glitch, and you're up to $50,000 of just money. Why'd you stop there, I guess? <laughs> I'm very curious as to... Why just 50000 I mean, if we're just going to just balls to the wall, it's clear we don't know what risk management is. Uh, why stop there? Go to town. Did you just run the clock out? That's right. Losing a quick $50,000 of borrowed money. If you listen very carefully, you can even hear the exact moment that the soul exits the husk. 
The legend of Control the Narrative is of course an undisputed S tier. There is nowhere else on the internet where you can watch stuff like this unfold. Pioneers like Control the Narrative willing to risk everything to entertain us and for a shot at a better life. And for that, Control the Narrative takes his spot with the legends on the S tier. Now this is what I call premium risk management. The guy had $2,000. Now, why only risk that when you can risk $50,000? i am not sure whatever came of that, uh, if, if you could just... So, the thing is, with going to court and saying you're stupid, ignorance is not... Ignorance of a law does not make it okay. You can't... I didn't know. You, know, you can't just play dumb. You still gotta pay that money back, so... Why risk $2,000 when you can stack on debt on top of that? Like, that sounds cool. The guy would have been ahead had he just took out a loan for 50000 bought a Tesla Model 3. I mean, yeah. Uh, cars even went up more than stocks. There's a million other ways he could have spent that $50,000. One, not even fighting the trend. Maybe not on an earnings gamble. I get, uh, You know, I've heard about that story. It's, it's been a while. But my reaction was, that's insanely stupid. It's hilarious until you think that that person is out fifty grand right now. Like, I lost that much one time. Uh, it was on Amazon. My account was not $2,000. There's a difference. Uh, and, man, uh, you know, that didn't feel good. <laughs> I couldn't imagine losing it. And, uh, yeah, that took a couple weeks. I, I call it the month of December, but uh, it even still took me some time. This guy just rocked it out and all in. That's insane. If I was Hayek, though the GameStop fiasco might have you believe that the Wall Street bets boys are righteous warriors looking to take down the evil short sellers betting against the economy, you could not be more wrong. If you were on Wall Street bets during the beginning of Corona, you know that there was no lack of degenerates making blood money hand over fist as 401ks evaporated, businesses collapsed, and people waited in the bread lines. One specifically retarded trader known as If I Was Hayek saw the impending... Okay, uh, I don't know if that's the first time he said the R word. Uh, I don't say that on my channel. Uh, so if that does offend anybody, I'll just say sorry. I did say that in front of someone one time, and uh, uh, they said, why do, you, why do you keep saying that? And I said, well, because that person is... And I doubled down, <laughs> and it turns out their kid was... Uh, uh, what's the politically correct term? Men mentally ill? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, man, it sounds mean to say not all, not everything was there. But anyway, I, I felt horrible, so I, I quit saying it after that. Like, uh, so if that does offend anybody, I do, I do get that. This isn't my video. Crisis before anyone else could. Expecting the downfall of cruises and theme parks, this lucky degenerate dropped $150,000 into puts on Disney and Carnival. Wait, go back. So 150k into puts on Generate dropped $150,000 into puts on Disney to puts on Disney and cruise lines. Does it say his uh his account total? That just tells you what he's up. So I want to know what 150k is to these guys. 150k for me would just be I'm I'm taking a pretty decent bet. Uh is 150k this guy his whole account or I guess we got to just let it play. 150k on puts. This guy sounds not far off. We got a virus. It's actually a comment I even made. We knew about the Rona, uh, not in 2020, but in 2019. Uh, Philip DeFranco was actually talking about it, saying, hey, something's going on in China. Uh, people are just laying in the sidewalk dead. I even said on my YouTube channel, like, man, uh, that could be the excuse. You know, that comes over here and causes a bunch of fear and panic. Uh, man, was that an understatement because they did. Markets ran wild with it. Uh, so if this guy was of that same belief, I don't even see the, uh, I wish we knew what the price was. He bought the 100 strike. Hmm. I wish we knew just a little bit more about this guy's position, because usually I make fun of Wall Street bets. Depending on his account size, I don't know, it might not be, uh, might not be as bad as we think. He's up to 538000 in Carnival. Within days of the bat virus beginning to ravage the United States, if I was Hayek's initial investment rocketed to over four million dollars. Four that kind of million money, dollars? He could have taken the coward's way out, investing in an S&P Virgin fund and collecting an easy two hundred thousand dollars per year. However, if- Stop. So this guy takes hundred fifty thousand, turns it into four million. I'm gonna lose my shit if I find out 
he just yolos that all to zero. There's no way. I mean, what do you? Are you just? I better be losing it for no reason. Are you touching tips with the Dogecoin billionaire, millionaire, whatever he was, taking his hundred thousand to over three million, something like that, and then telling people he's not going to sell, and it's all the way back down. Congrats, you were a millionaire. You saw what that life was like. They call it the coward's way out on this. You could have just invested in the S and P and make two hundred grand a year. Is that just not enough for you? Like. You took your initial investment and you could have made that every year just from dividends on some crap. Started over. YOLO some other stupid stuff. I better find out. Maybe this guy, I, I have a feeling I know what I'm about to hear, but tell me he loses like a million, walks away with three, pays a million in taxes, so he his net is, uh, puts 150 in, takes two million out. Tell me that's what we're about to hear. If I was Hayek was far from satisfied, holding his puts with diamond hands. You that can probably the guess the where teacher. this story goes. In just a month, stimulus packages, PPP loans, and Jerome Powell's money printer destroyed all of his puts, leaving him with 20,000. What the? F so from 150k to 4 million, one of the greenest trades I think I've seen. And you've rocked that thing all the way back down to twenty thousand dollars. Are you stable? Are you even okay? Like, are you mentally there? What were you thinking? It turned to four. Like, this is Doge. Oh, I'm gonna sell when it turns to ten million. That what you were going for? Just a cool ten? Just who? Who cares about the luck I already had? Let's just now nah, piss that away. Twenty thousand. You just lost a hundred and thirty thousand dollars. I may have lost four million, but the Fed has cost this nation everything. First of all, this nation doesn't care about you, and the sooner you figure that out, the better. This guy probably posts on Facebook a lot too, his opinion. Doesn't even vote, doesn't go anywhere, but just bitches all day. Congrats to the bulls and the longs, enjoy it while it lasts. Well, I'm from the future, it lasts quite a bit, had you just not fought the trend, you were fine. You had one of the most amazing, you had puts in one of the most amazing crashes we've ever seen. Money was printing left and right for anyone short. It was a great time. Any put will do. And you watched it vanish? That didn't happen overnight. It was like a super recovery. We bounced and we just, the rocket kept going. You could have stopped out just fine. This has to be photoshopped. Who is this guy? Did he fo did he photoshop this? That's what I would do. Turn in four million. I'm excited. I'm like, oh wait, hey, I don't want people. You know, I get a sob story every day about people asking me for money. I'm like, oh, uh, J.K. lost every bit of it. Uh, darn the luck. Yeah. Anyways, back to twenty grand. Uh, can I borrow some money from you? Surely that's photoshopped. I don't believe he lost it all. Photoshopped. 100%. That's the only way I'm sleeping tonight. ...dollars in a graph that looked like Satan's erection. Truly <laughs> hilarious. Despite being a very moving story, if I was Hayek's trade lacks the incredible backstory of some of the other YOLOs on this list. And for that, I think this trade wins itself a place right in the C tier. No, I don't know what these tiers are, but F for, fa uh, for failure. Yeah, that's two Fs. You can pick up on the first one. You are a failure. Four million. Do you not have a girlfriend? A wife? You know, like, in every relationship, I don't care if it's another guy or whatever, your partner. The person you're there every day with, someone's got to have a brain in the relationship. Two weird people don't just meet each other. They, they, don't, they don't work out. There's always some dignity or log there's a logical thinker. Did you just not show your partner your account? Or you are the logical thinker. You Photoshop this like, hey... Don't tell the family members. We're just gonna <laughs> we're gonna ride the gravy train for the rest of our lives. We're gonna just chill on this one. I gotta hear from this guy. Anal Farmer Two. That's a good Icarus name. was so intoxicated by the experience of flight that he flew too close to the sun. His wings melting as he fell into the sea and drowned. Except for Anal Farmer, those wings were risky, out of the money options with two days. Of Okay, I must buy. Why not buy 5,000 contracts? You bought 4,999. Why did you not buy 5,000? You have enough battery power to buy just one more contract. 
You bought Spy 296 calls. Wait, I thought Robinhood only let you do 200 at a time. Okay, see. So you're already down. Okay, so he's down 80 cents per contract. He's down to 80 cents per contract. What were these up? Six hundred K YOLO and FDs. I, I never got their lingo, but they sound stupid. Expiring tomorrow. If I die, remember me. Probably not for the right reasons, but yeah, we'll remember you. Um, what do they call it? The Darwin Award? Um, natural selection. Um, that's about the only thing I'm gonna remember you under. Like, hey, remember that one time and you know, that happened. Like, this is why we have warning labels that say don't drink the shampoo. And we're not even through this uh, through this trade yet. You put 600 k into options contracts expiring tomorrow. Uh, from an experience side, uh, the only way I would do that is with insider information. I know what's about to happen tomorrow because I just paid some, you know, some writer a couple hundred grand uh, to put this... Uh, you know, letter out, not, not letter, article out tomorrow. I know everyone's going to see it. Uh, Jerome Powell was just over for uh, tea and crackers. That, that you guys have tea and tea and crumpets? Um, Pelosi just had a spicy night on Valentine's Day with me. Like, you know, I like that's the only way I'm doing that and give myself that kind of time. The amount of money I'd have to have in my account for 600 grand... At least a hundred million. Yeah, I wouldn't even risk that with ten million in the account. No, that's stupid. You have no time at all. I would consider, uh, gosh, I would consider selling those maybe, which turns out to be profitable. But in the, you know, I, I wouldn't want it to go against me. Maybe a spread. What do you? I'm seeing a, a narrative here, or like a a pattern, a common theme. You guys have money. And you have access. You're like a little kid, uh, and dad's got a hot rod in the garage. And some of you guys don't even bother opening the garage door. You just take dad's car uh, and just send it. You know, forward, reverse, doesn't matter. You're going to hit the garage wall or go through the garage door into oncoming traffic. There's got to be a good one in here. Until expiration. Anal farmer. A mere 19-year-old at the time uh, with $110,000 in his Robin Hood account until I Stop. Expiration. Hang on. Anal farm. Okay, so unemployed student with 5,500 $5, worth of income from trading stocks. How do I file? What? How do you file taxes? Turbo tax it up. It's get your tax docs of the year. Call CPA. You're unemployed student. You got 5,500 bucks. See, uh, you're not off to a bad start. You're unemployed, but you just made 5,500 bucks? Like, someone making 70 grand a, a year probably makes that their taxes a, a month. You know, that's still, what, 50, 60 grand a year? You still gotta pay taxes, but you're not off to a bad start. Uh... A mere 19 year old. How can I stop being so re. Message me. If you're seeing this video, message me. In fact, if you're on this video and you're still entertaining the trading, trading world, I can tell you I'm not going to turn 150,000 into 4 million. Uh, but I'm also not going to turn 4 million into 20,000. At all. Uh, not in any dream world. Uh, like nukes could go off, and my account wouldn't hit that. You, yeah, nope. Message me. Yeah, get a hold of me. I can help you out with this. I'm not a licensed therapist or anything like that, but I got. <laughs> I don't think you even need a license for this kind of help yet. Let me at least get to that point. Hundred ten thousand dollars in his Robinhood account from online business. Decided to YOLO all. Okay, so you're unemployed. You got an online business. You unemployed with a hundred and ten thousand. Like there's unemployed, and you're in the unemployment line, and you're living with your mom. You're living in her basement. Um, 
you know, you got like three kids, you're living off tax money uh, and food stamps. Like, there's like a million ways to be unemployed. Not very many of them have $110,000 in their Robinhood account. If I'm unemployed uh, and I have $110,000 in my account and I'm not a professional trader, I'm thinking, I got to save this capital. I got to preserve this capital. Um, I'm probably in the S&P. I'm probably in dividend. How can I churn this money? Like, I'm sure about to see something fantastic turn into a billion dollars and then zero again. But why wouldn't you turn that into dividend? Something that pays a little bit, maybe a little bit of growth, a little bit of dividend. Use that money to fund some of the YOLOs later. Keep that burning on the back burner. Let the little little coins fall. YOLO with the coins. 110,000 on aligned technology call options with merely days until expiration. By some miracle, the next oh, 1,000 on aligned technology dollars in his Robinhood account from online business decided to YOLO all 110,000 on aligned technology call options with merely. Okay, so you're probably selling pictures of your butthole online on OnlyFans. You get 110,000 and you YOLO it all? All or nothing, huh? Are they buying pictures of your feet? What? Do you think about what's going to happen if that goes to zero? How are you going to get the next 110000 No, none of it was like luck. Like, hey, I was in the right place at the right time. A lot of businesses need that just to start off. You got a good chunk. Whatever your online business was, you got a good chunk of that. Is it repli Can you replicate that? Because then maybe, like, if you're rocking it like that, then eh, maybe YOLO once or twice before you learn that lesson and start stacking money. I need, I need to know more details on these guys. Days until expiration. By some miracle, the next day a line announced accelerated stock buybacks leading the share price to rocket upwards. In 24 hours, Anal Farmer more than doubled his portfolio, making $180,000 and bringing his Robinhood balance to over $340,000 in total. Thinking... Okay, so here's this comment again. You turn your 110,000 into 340,000. You guys ever played Russian Roulette? It's like with a revolver, you put one bullet in, you spin that thing, close it, and start pulling the trigger. Some of you guys got to pull that trigger and not blow your brain out. Or you didn't paint the ceiling. Uh, you know, you, you did all right. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling that it's still there and there's about to be another trigger squeeze? Logically, recognizing his insane luck, and Good. looking Recognize from an outside luck. perspective. Okay. Anal Farmer realized he couldn't be satisfied with almost half a million dollars at 19 years old. So he made a very wise decision to drop $170,000 into spy puts expiring the next day. God, okay, so 110 to 340,000. And you think, uh, you know, I see the numbers, 170,000. At least it's not his whole account. You know he's probably just going to YOLO it twice. Uh, but you take more than half your account and you do the spy puts expiring the next day. Why? At least at the casino, you get free drinks. You can spread that out over a couple bets. Uh, you, you might even meet a girl there. Like, first of all, you never had this money. It went up in your, you watched a number go up in an app. You never actually had this money. I know you're emotionally attached to it because everybody is. You're trying to get more. And you're going to just yell and watch this number probably disappear. Or probably wouldn't be on this video if it, if it didn't disappear. In another stroke of insane luck, the next day Mango no. Man announced new tariffs which Mango tanked Man. the entire market. While most traders were considering going long rope, Anal Farmer was sitting on a 277th. Okay, so this guy turns 110,000 to 340,000 to $646,000. You realize this is a six shooter revolver, right? You just pulled the trigger twice. <laughs> oh my, and there's Workhorse. Workhorse is down. That was a crap a scam company, anyway. No, don't do it. Spy puts 277,000 profit in one minute. Run. Run. 
thousand dollar. Don't do it anymore. Bringing his total portfolio value to six hundred and forty six thousand dollars at just nineteen years old. He nineteen years old, you almost have a million dollars. That million dollar screenshot. Anal Farmer let emotions cloud his judgment. Shortly after making more than half a million dollars in less than a week, he decided no. to YOLO seven hundred thousand dollars out of the money spot. No. So you turn a hundred and ten thousand into just to wrap my head around this, to six hundred and fifty thousand dollars, hundred and ten to six fifty. Now you wanted a screenshot of one million. What I said was almost one million. That's from your world. You're nineteen years old. That's the same thing. Like nineteen years old, I was like homeless, sleeping in a car. You got a million dollars. Oh my god! And then so, and then you put six hundred thousand on the line, expiring the next day. I, I think my heart rate's going up just listening to this crap. If I die, remember me. Yeah, hopefully you were playing in traffic, and that's why you couldn't manage this. My call is expiring in one day. For some of you newcomers who may not understand what that means, that's like incomprehensibly retarded. <laughs> that Hang on, I think that might be the legal term for what he actually just did or is about to do. It means every second the share price is below your strike price. You're literally burning money. And his money did burn. $500,000, in fact. Leaving him with $200,000 to lose. No, okay. And over the next few weeks, he Stop. did lose. So 150 to 300 to 650 to 200,000. You're still up 50 grand. Depending on if you're an active day trader status or not, you're probably in the hole still for paying taxes on that. Uh, or you got to pay taxes on the 50 grand. That's still that's a 50 almost 50% year. That's not bad. But I know you're not thinking that. You're thinking I almost had a million and he says you did lose. My sister goes to the casino a lot. She used to a lot. She would turn two hundred dollars into like four thousand, something crazy. She would just get these lucky wins, uh, and then she'd be down. She'd she'd rock it right back down to a thousand dollars. I'd tell her, call it, get out of here. You're good. She's like, I'm already down three k or something like that. I might as well just play the rest. I'm like, you're not you're not down. Your brain's on backwards. You're actually still up. Remember that two hundred dollars you came with? It is now a thousand. It is like forget the extra number. Here's what you have in your hands. And you're like, ah, let me just piss into the wind on this one. Throw it all away. Approximately $160,000 of his account balance. CGC. Leaving him with just around 40000 At this point, down from his high of $750,000, Anal Farmer was left with only 50% of his initial investment. Would that stop him? No, of probably not. not. Yeah. Anal Farmer had developed a plan to regrow his wealth more stably and conservatively. He developed a plan to grow his now $40,000 more conservatively. We're seeing, hopefully Forex has nothing to do with this because that's not the case. I can tell you right now, US dollar, Japanese yen, that, that's moving like some of his options contracts. This is either he made it back and he walked away or it went to zero. I'm pretty sure we already know the answer. That was destined to succeed. What was that plan? To YOLO the remaining forty thousand dollars on call options for a weed stock, right? A weed stock. God. So you've YOLO'd and you won twice, and then now you're on this just downslope, this just ramp. You are at the top of. Uh, hang on, let's find another reference. You're just at the top of a landslide. I can't. Even, I don't even have a story for you. You're just at the top of a landslide. And you're like, you know what we should do? Let's just surf this thing down. We could get off here, but nah. If it expires worthless, it expires worthless, boys. At least I have a very good story to tell. Yeah, at the psych ward. Because you either have to be committed. Your IQ is at least double digits. I would not brag about that. Hey, there was a time I was rich and set up for life, but I decided to... Nah. I mean, your name's Anal Farmer, so it makes sense. But... From a listen to your story. Your story was an amazing story to tell. From 150 to 300, playing that Russian roulette, you squeeze the trigger one more time. 650,000. 
one more time and you painted the ceiling with your brains. You just didn't know it yet because your body's still hemorrhaging and shaking on the floor so you had a couple more trades left in there as you bleed dry. Four earnings. As you could probably predict, he lost everything. You're Anal an Farmer's YOLO represents a great, wholesome Wall Street Bets YOLO. While the story may not be as remarkable as Control the Narrative or some of the other competitors on this list. Okay, I shouldn't say you guys, I take that back. Uh, these are some of the dumbest plays. I don't care how miraculous they are, how much money you did make at the time. You never actually had, <laughs> like, uh, Toretto from uh, Fast and the Furious. You never had your car. You know, like, you think you're doing this, you're doing this all. You're playing a game on your phone, you're watching the number go up, but you never correlated that to actual dollars or, or anything at, at all. You just. You watched a number go up on your phone. Some of you guys still have to pay taxes on that. Like, you're not even thinking about it. The other part, like Uncle Sam, if you haven't figured it out yet, and you're 19, you'll, you'll soon figure this out. You have to pay taxes on breathing. And you have to pay taxes on the taxes you just paid. Like, everywhere you turn, there's taxes. So you're already in the hole, even if you just break even. It's something stupid. You're making incredibly stupid decisions. And I think by the time you guys are 30, hopefully there's no one in here that's 30s. You're 35. You're looking back on life, you're going to think, man, that was incredibly dumb. If I could do that again, um, I would probably take that money and run, which is an incredibly a gambler's mentality. Um, something I tell my mentorship chat a lot is recognize a win streak. Like, man, that was luck. I, I got this. Let's, uh, let's pretend that didn't happen. Get back to where I was at and take that extra money, do whatever you want with it. Buy a house. Uh, put it in dividends. But put something physical in your life that you can say, like, if you blow the rest of your account, like, hey, I got this from it. Uh, it it's important that you guys do take some money out. You got it. Don't forget the taxes part. Uh, but like people in my group, they bought engagement rings, they bought houses, they bought like just awesome stuff that they look back and say, like, I'm not a trader now, but at the time I did, I took advantage of one of the most awesome rallies after the craziest crash. Uh, I was able to take some money, imaginary money, where I clicked my thumbs a couple times. Uh, and poof, I had more money in my account. Like, it doesn't mean anything until you actually cash that stuff out. And you guys aren't cashing crap out. You're like, oh, let's just keep this ladder going. Uh, and then you just fall. You jump off a cliff. And now you got nothing to show for it. The only reason people even remember you is because people like me are making videos off of you. And in fact, uh, oh, this channel's not even monetized. <laughs> but if it was... I'd make my $3 on this video in ad revenue, and I still made more than you guys. So thanks for that. Uh, if any one of these guys is still trading, please get a hold of me. I'm a thousand percent serious. I know it sounds cocky, but if someone couldn't talk, I'm going to find a way to make sense to you guys. Yeah, yeah easily. It's a beautiful YOLO, and we can't help but tip our hats to Anal Farmer and pray that he didn't commit suicide after going dark on Reddit. W he went dark on Reddit? That was kind of a dark joke. So the guy loses all his money, never hear from him again? Hopefully his dad just took his belt off and beat the crap out of him. Because his dad probably has a little bit more life experience. Hopefully his dad's still around. Uh, that's not a joke, though, as far as... Uh, I imagine people do lose off themselves over... A crazy loss on uh, on stocks. But if you heard what I just said, you never had that money in the first place. You were never actually up to 650000 You had no intentions of taking it out. You were never actually up. There was a number on your phone that was just higher than the previous number. Uh, that That's it. You should never get emotionally attached. Um, yeah, period. A at all. Yeah, until you take it out, that money's not yours. I don't care if it says $10 million in the account. Look what Doge Millionaire, Doge Coin Boy. What is that guy's name? Is it Doge Millionaire? That sounds wrong. He YOLO'd his, you know, just debt. You know, I don't know if he mortgaged his house, uh, credit cards. It's one of those. Life savings puts it all into Dogecoin. By some miracle, Elon actually picks up, starts tweeting. Uh, Elon has a pretty awesome effect where he brings attention to things. Goes up, turns his 80 grand or whatever into th over 3 million and rides it all the way back down. Like, imagine being that guy. And there's a guy in here just like that. Like, cool, now you're never going to get a girlfriend. Because, I don't know, uh, or, or a guy, a boyfriend, whatever you want. If I heard that story, I'd be like, oh, cool. So you're absolutely stupid. 
thinks, but I want if I, if every relationship ends in marriage or a breakup, and I just know that's headed straight for a breakup. And I'm not going to be rich, so there's no point in marrying you because you're going to piss away all the money anyway. So, like, I, you would just be alone the rest of your life. No way you can make stupid decisions like that. Best be God. In April of 2019, this diamond-handed degenerate bought $26,000 worth of Tesla 450 Leap call options expiring in oh, 2021. To some of the newcomers, that may not seem completely insane. Keep in mind, however, that Tesla at the time was trading at around $50 per share. By August, WSB God was down 60% on his position. After losing over $10,000, he did what anyone would do if they were mentally slow. He doubled down on his <laughs> position and held the line. In WSB God's case, he was rewarded. As Tesla mooned through the winter, his initial $40,000 investment grew to over one3 Okay, so here's another 40000 to $1.3 million. I'm a borderline a little bit jealous because that takes like years to get. This guy just does it in the span of a couple months. Tesla doesn't happen. Companies like Tesla don't happen very often. I don't know if you guys have heard that. Uh, but yeah, out of the over 7,000 tickers, you pick the one that's going for it. 40,000 to 1.3. I'm not even excited because I know it's about to be zero. Somehow, you're going to drag your balls through glass and go play in traffic, and that million dollars is going to be zero. I just know it. Million. But of course, that wasn't of course. enough. In yeah. January, WSB God bought 120,000 in Tesla calls at the $1,000 okay. strike. Okay, 1.3 million spent 100,000. two months. That's fine. They called him a madman. Another delusional autist caught up in the rush of quick gains. Uh. What happened? Tesla rocketed to over $900 per share in the next month, bringing WSB God's portfolio value to almost four and a half million dollars from an initial 40,000. Okay, so this one even tops the one before. First of all, he had 1.3 million and he spent 120,000 on options contracts with a couple months worth of time. With some risk management, that's a very, that's still a pretty big position. You're not gonna take too many of those L's uh, and still have an account. But uh, it, strike when the iron's hot. Tesla was on definitely on a burner. It was going for it. So I mean, I didn't take that exact play, but I can tell you right now, I was in Tesla when it made that move, uh, and I had every bit like my normal risk tolerance was probably tripled uh, during Tesla's run like that. So I can't even say that one was actually that bad. The guy had 1.3 million, and he tosses 100k on on something he likes. Uh, and now we know that guy probably does it on every play, but I, I, I can't even be that mad at that. But so he turns it into four million dollars. Four, we got it right here, four point three million dollars. You, the previous, I know this is going to end in zero. You, the previous guy, and, and the Doge boy. Just need to open an OnlyFans and just circle jerk it together and just talk about how you guys were all millionaires and watched it go to zero. Unless this guy actually takes his money and runs, then uh, then it's just gonna be him and the other guy. Dollar investment. There's some speculation as to whether or not WSB God faked his gains in an attempt to uphold his reputation as the god of Wall Street bets. And for that unfortunate reason, we simply can't offer him a position amongst the true legends. WSB God's YOLO lands himself right in the C tier. So no if there's proof. one man who yeah. has the power to make your calls print, it's Elon Musk. And I'd still have that only fans with those other two. Exactly. After maxing out two credit cards in a home equity <laughs> line of credit, Dej Stop. Guy maxes out two credit cards in a home equity line of credit. Yeah, why lose what the, why lose just the money you have when you can stack on just life debt? Like sweet. Okay, so you got credit cards, line of credit, both carrying interest so you're paying that interest so you took your initial value out plus how much it's going to take you to pay that back over time assuming you piss this away turn it to zero uh amortize your loans out how much did this bet actually cost you Jula plan to sit back with ninety thousand dollars in tesla calls and let elon blast them to valhalla during the cyber truck reveal <laughs> except oh no so he did this during the uh, the Tesla Cybertruck reveal. I was actually on my way to go hunting when this happened, and I was in Tesla calls. And then Elon rolled out the space wedge. 
I thought the Tesla truck was a joke. I, I was really, I was, I, it, Google also had earnings that day. I was in Google and Tesla, and I was glad I was out in the woods hunting because I was extremely pissed off <laughs> at the time. And I did not have anywhere near what this guy had. Uh, I lost a few thousand because, you know, risk management and all. Uh, binary event. It's going to go up or it's going to go down. You're putting all your chips on the line right here. I knew that going in. Uh, while I wasn't happy, no one's happy to lose. <sighs> that did really piss me off that day. That didn't happen. On Cybertruck launch day, Tesla stock dropped 4% after hours. The next day, our hero Dedula decided to live stream the market open to assess the damage. As you can see, he lost almost all of his money, most of which was borrowed from high interest creditors. Less than a month after the Cybertruck play, Dedula's portfolio was down to less than $30,000, and he was fired from his job. So he went from 90k from debt. You are accumulated net worth 90k. You're still paying on, by the way. You don't have that net worth anymore. Uh, to 30k, and you're fired from your job. I hope we hear from this guy. Man, that's. Now Dave Ramsey talks a lot about sometimes life happens, uh, and it always happens at the worst time. And this guy sounds like when it rains it pours. But you set yourself up for that kind of failure. You're like one of those people that either jumped off a building or played in the freeway and said, ah, if it's my time, it's my time. You know, like, no, I mean, there are things you could have done to avoid that, that semi running you over. Realizing he needed a more secure job that would give him consistent worry-free W-2 income he could count on, Dedula decided to disregard all of that and start day trading options professionally. In December, Dedula put his faith in Wait. Elon once again. Wait, how do you day trade professionally? What makes you a professional trader? Is it working for a firm or just doing it full time? Is it an experience level? This guy's gonna YOLO professionally. Dropping 80% of his portfolio into Tesla 400 calls expiring in March. In just one week. I can tell you professionals don't do that. Dedula made over $80,000 as Elon took Tesla to the moon. In the end, Dedula was able to cash out over $200,000 in profit, paying off as many loans as well as his Model 3 before quitting Dedula. No way. So you YOLO, 90k turns to 30, YOLO to 200,000. Are we not playing right now? You bought a Model 3, you paid off your loans, and that? Day trading for good. A heartwarming story that taught us an important lesson. After losing a lot of borrowed money, sometimes it makes sense to leave your real job and YOLO options professionally to make it all back. An idea that many members of Wall Street Bets have taken to heart. For a few of them, it's worked kind of. Dedula, you win your place in the B tier. No, we need to be sharing that guy's story more often. You're, first of all, you're, you're kind of dumb for YOLOing, but... God, I'm happy it worked out. So you paid off your debt and you just called it good, called it quits. You learned from your lesson, said, all right, I'm going to go ahead and get out while I'm ahead. Shout out to that guy. I for sure want him to reach out to me. There are very few members of Wall Street Bets that are so autistic they force Robinhood to completely change their platform. Irony Man, however, was one. In pursuit of a risk-free arbitrage opportunity, this legend was attempting to trade box no spreads. No money at risk. If you don't understand how box spreads work, don't worry. Irony Man didn't know either. All you need to know is that it's what led him to lose over 2,000% of his initial investment. It's also what made Robinhood disable his account and permanently ban box spreads from the platform entirely. This degenerate lost almost 20 times what he initially invested, resulting in this beautiful screenshot and this incredible message from the Robinhood team. It takes a unique trader to lose 20 times their initial <laughs> investment, change an entire brokerage platform, and get a Robinhood account disabled. Irony Man will forever ever go down as a legend in Wall Street bets history. Yeah, you and messed that, up so bad you changed a brokerage. Deep fucking I don't think value. anyone else shares How that. How could we possibly make we a tier list for legendary Wall Street bets YOLOs without including the fabled deep fucking value? The YOLO to end all YOLOs. The YOLO that made both GameStop. Ted Cruz okay. and AOC act like they care about hedge funds screwing retail investors over. A truly icon. This is the guy that made millions off GameStop, right? Okay, so let me tell you guys something real quick. Uh, when you see success stories like this, there's a buy, there's a loser in every trade, right? When when you buy an options contract, someone is selling it to you. Somebody sold him all those. Somebody funded his his account. 
money didn't come out of nowhere. It came out of someone else's account. So for every winner there is, there's just that many losers. So if you were to look at Wall Street bets, that's why I would say take it with a grain of salt because you're collectively just kind of like uh, you're playing hungry, hungry hippos and there's just a bunch of money in the middle and everybody's just going to try to grab. You're going to grab it from that guy. You're stealing from that guy and the one next to you. No one in there is your friend. Uh, you just temporarily team up on tickers and take out the other guys as far as buyers and sellers go. Iconic moment in Wall Street bets history. For deep fucking value, his trade began the way most great trades do on Wall Street bets. The perfect combination of Adderall and testosterone fueled greed. He invested $50,000 into GameStop lead 50, call options as the stock tanked to its lowest level in history. With diamond hands, words like negative cash flow and bankruptcy just could not shake this stubborn degenerate. Despite many other Wall Street... Okay, so this is the one that I called out that was wrong. Uh, someone asked me about GameStop on my YouTube channel before it blew up. And even I said, no, like that's not, that's not a thing. Uh, but one pattern I do see, especially after this now, is every time someone thinks like this guy made money off of a uh, GameStop, right? The short squeeze that happened. Now everyone's like, oh, there's got like, remember Tesla and EVs? Like this is the next Tesla. This is the next one. Now, every time there's a stock that's shorted more than one person and there's someone's like, oh, it's heavily shorted. We got, we got to squeeze these people out. They'll be forced to close their position. Like guys. Like, yeah, come on, but that's not, not, doesn't happen like GameStop every time. Short squeezes happen, but they're just not as violent as this one. This is the equivalent to getting struck by lightning. Uh, and not dying, but just turning into Thor. Like, th what are the odds of that happening? A lot of you guys are real quick to go get struck by lightning to find out you're just not Thor, you're just dead. Street Bets members calling him crazy and retard and crazy retard. Deep fucking value held the line like no other than Michael Burry himself. Fast forward to a few months ago. GameStop started to gain some momentum. New spikes in online sales and strategic partnerships with Microsoft began to drive the share price up. That's when a new theory emerged on Wall Street bets. One that would revolutionize the GameStop option play. That was the insane. fabled short squeeze. The idea that when a stock has a high enough short ratio, a rapid upward pressure in share price would cause short sellers to buy back into their positions, causing the price to go up, causing more short sellers to buy back, causing the price to go up, and ultimately causing a chain reaction of complete and utter degeneracy. GameStop's rally to 400 brought deep fucking value's initial $50,000 investment to over $40 million. $50,000 to $40 million. Now, We've seen many great legends let their Good pride night. become their downfall. Take Anal Farm, whose intoxication with the prospect of $1 million blinded him to the fact that he was a complete retard trading options on Robin Hood. However, regardless of what happens to Deep Fucking Value's portfolio when this is all over, he has absolutely earned his place among Wall Street Bets legends in the S tier. Each one of these YOLOs has molded Wall Street yeah. Bets into the flourishing and vibrant place it is now. To each and every one of the legends on this list, I commend thee. And to the degenerates watching this video, giddy with Robin Hood in hand, I wish you nothing but green accounts. And wow. Okay, so 50000 to $40 million. Uh, I know he went to court for something for manipulation. I don't think that actually panned out. I think he got to keep it. So he's still $20 million ahead. Taxes paid. Just 50000 Let me click my thumbs a little bit and turn that into $20 million. You know how long you have to work at an average paying job to even get... You won't make that in your life. This guy did over a span of a couple months? That's crazy. That's insane. Uh, I definitely missed that. My, my GameStop trade was from like 30 to 60. I, I saw the uh, the short squeeze. Just that day. It was one time I tagged out and then it just kept rolling. Uh, but I guess... Uh, I guess there's a trade-off. One, my account will never look like these guys, both good and bad. Uh... But two, you know, I guess I, I missed some of these trades because GameStop was kind of laughable. I don't actually trade pump and dumps like that. That's just not my cup of tea, not my bread and what, bread and butter. Yeah, I don't know those things. It's just not what I'm in every day. Uh, that's where I would say it gets the gambling connotation from. There's strategies for it. I don't do it. Uh, there's a couple people that are profitable doing it. You know, like the YouTubers, like Ross. You know, that's it. It's kind of hard to be 
kind of hard to be wrong when you are someone like Ross or, or Timothy Sykes. Because low float crap like that in a game of supply and demand where everything, you know, more buyers it goes up, more sellers it goes down. They have the following. They create those pump and dumps more than anything. Yeah, there's a chart set up with some candles on there. Uh, but when they say they're going to buy because they think this up, then everyone floods in after. It pushes up and then they sell because they think their plan worked out. And then it just comes because everyone else starts selling after. Like They do it mostly themselves. It's kind of hard for them to be wrong. Uh, if, if Wall Street Bets ever had just one chief to the tribe like that, they could knock out these pump and dumps just left, right, front, and center. Uh, but it, I've been on there like once, once or twice. Uh, and it just seemed like a bunch of bickering back and forth. And you're here out of the millions of people online, we just went over what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of them? Out of millions, you heard about seven. That's like Timothy Sykes. He made so much money. How many of his students are millionaires? You know, like we're, we're just where you where you got to have some realistic expectations, I think. And some of these kids were set up perfectly for life. They should have just subscribed to Graham Stephan or something and just bought the S&P. Like Graham is he's paralyzed to make a dollar. But it'll be hard for him to lose anything, too, because he just buys like the boring stuff, like the polar opposite. If these guys were the heads of the coin, Graham Stephan's the tails. Uh, I'm I try to play both sides like investor and, and trader, but man, it sucks to hear that these kids were actually set up. Uh, some of these guys again, the Russian roulette is the best way I can describe it. You guys took that six shooter and just kept squeezing, and you heard that first click, you made a bunch of money, and you're like, "That's cool. I want to feel alive again <laughs> until you're dead." Man. Uh, I couldn't even imagine finding these guys. I don't know. If, if there's any takeaways from this video, risk management. You have $1.3 million. You find something you absolutely like, and you're going to put some, some money down. The 100000 as an investor, that's, that's a huge chunk. As a trader, with proper risk management, if I'm putting down hundred grand like that, I'm probably thinking I'm going to lose fifty. dollars uh, I'll probably have to get involved and close the trade or something like some kind of management along the way. I, I wouldn't just YOLO that out the door. He had two months left on the trade. That was probably the best trade I saw in here. The the 50K to 40 million in, in number-wise was, was awesome. He stuck to his guns. He bought leaps. He had plenty of time to be right. Uh, at that point, Michael Burry was even long GameStop. There were some fundamental reasons why that, that guy was right. <sighs> he definitely got the lightning strike on that play. Uh, man, I don't know if I have a takeaway for these guys other than just learn risk management and dial it back. You're playing a game on your phone. If you're going to turn it into a game, at least when you get the high score, take the time to at least put your initials on the scoreboard. Take it out and put it in your account. And then start, what if you turned your, your what was it, 60, 40K to 600K? What if you just took 60, now you took 600K right out the door because you yoled on some crap. What if you just took 600,000 out, started over yoling with your $40,000 account? You blow it, so what? You still got 600 grand in the bank. Taxes paid, it's still a bought and paid for house. Uh, or what if you did turn that 40 grand to another 600? Then pull out 400, now you got 250K. Just hanging out to YOLO your little heart's content. Uh, but think of this like, the one thing I noticed they didn't do was treat this like a, a, a ratchet. One click up, that money is untouchable. You, you know, you got this much. You know, one more click up, that rest from there under, untouchable. Uh, they didn't do that. They just, the more they made, the more they bet. Essentially, they had a $10 betting game the whole entire time. Nothing changed. Percentage-wise, it was all the same. 100% all or nothing. It doesn't count if you made 100% and 100%, 100%, and then lose 100% once, because that all that's all it takes. That's how the math works. Uh, I don't know if your calculator's different, but once you lose 100%, that's it. Had they just practiced anything like that, they would have been much better off. Uh, other than the whole Robin Hood glitch, that's theft. Uh, you know, obviously I can't condone it, but if you're asking me realistically, would I have tried it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would have maybe exploited it a little bit and said, oh, I'm sorry, here you go. Here's your money back. Anyway, I'll wrap it up here. Thanks to uh, Jake, my admin, for sharing this video, telling me to do this. I hope if one of these guys just reached out, this video makes it worth it.
Anyway, I'll end up here, guys. Uh, do you like reaction videos? Let me know in the comments down below, uh, and I'll see you in the next video.